Shannon McKee, Mary Kate McGuire, and Kaylee Pease present What's for Dinner? Today's special, The Brain. We're doing the first Rice crispy part. Yay! I think it's enough. Yeah, that's enough. The corpus callosum is the nerve bundle that once connected the two hemispheres of this brain. Frontal lobe. The frontal lobes are large areas of cerebral cortex located at the top front part of the brain behind the eyes. Research, researchers believe this part of the brain is responsible for abstract thought and emotional control. The frontal lobe in the left hemisphere contains one of the two special areas responsible for language processing. Bronchus area is the frontal lobe and is responsible for controlling the muscles involved in producing speech. A thin vertical strip at the back of the frontal lobe is called the motor cortex. This part of the cerebral cortex sends signals to our muscles controlling our voluntary movements. Our occipital lobes are at the very back of our brain, farthest from our eyes. This is somewhat anti-intuitive since one of the major functions of this lobe is to interpret messages from our eyes in our visual cortex. Impulses from the retinas in our eyes sent to the visual cortex to be interpreted. Impulses from the right half of each retina are processed in the visual cortex on the right occipital lobe. Impulses from the left part of each retina are sent to the visual cortex in our left occipital lobe. Parietal lobes. The parietal lobes are located behind the frontal lobe, but still on top of the brain. The parietal lobes contain the sensory cortex, which is located right behind the motor cortex in the frontal lobe. The sensory cortex is a thin vertical strip that receives incoming touch sensations from the rest of our body. The top of the sensory cortex receives sensations from the bottom of the body, processing down the cortex to the bottom, which processes signals from our face and head. Temporal lobes. The temporal lobes process sound sensed by your ears. Sound waves are processed by the ears, turned into new neural impulses, and interpreted in our auditory cortices. Wernick's area interprets both written and spoken speech. Damage to this area would affect our ability to understand language. Our speech might sound fluent, but the lack of proper syntax and gram grammatical structure needs needed for meaningful communication. Not pictured in this diagram are the hindbrain and the midbrain. The hindbrain consists of structures in the top part of the spinal cord. Some of the important specific structures within the hindbrain are the medulla, pons, and the cerebellum. The midbrain is located just above the spinal cord but still below areas categorized as the forebrain. Medulla. The medulla is involved in the control of our blood pressure, heart rate, and breathing. It is also known as the medulla oblongata and is located above the spinal cord. Pons. The pons, located just above the medulla and toward the front, connects the hindbrain with the midbrain and forebrain. It is also involved in the control of facial expressions. The cerebellum. Cerebellum means little brain. The cerebellum co coordinates some habitual muscle movements, such as tracking a target with our eyes or playing the saxophone. Midbrain. The midbrain is very small in humans, but this area of the brain controls some very important functions. In general, your midbrain coordinates simple movements with sensory information. Different parts of the midbrain are important in various mus muscle coordinations. This area is behind the hindbrain and the forebrain and integrates some types of sensory information and muscle movements. Reticular formation is a net-like collection of cells throughout the midbrain that controls general body arousal and the ability to focus our attention. 
Thalamus. The thalamus is located on top of the brainstem. It is responsible for receiving the sensory signals coming up the spinal cord and sending them to the appropriate areas in the rest of the forebrain. Hippothalamus. The hypothalamus is a small structure right next to the thalamus. The hypothalamus controls several metabolic functions, including body temperature, sexual arousal, hunger, thirst, and the endocrine system. Amygdala and hippocampus. There are two arms surrounding the thalamus. These are called the hippocampus. Structures near the end of each hippocampal arm are called the amygdala. The amygdala is vital to our experience of emotion, and the hippocampus is vital to our memory system. Memories are processed through this area and then sent to other locations in the cerebral cortex for permanent storage. No. Do you have a big No. layer my skin. Work it! No, it's working in the kitchen. I can't. No, no, no. You have the cameras on, right? Oh my god, it's you. the wrong way. Can I wear this as a hat? been filming for like 10, but half of it is just you.